the share presentation that we've got. Uh, sure, it should be on the screen now for you. Oh, cool. Excellent. Is that is that there? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. OK, great. Thank you. So yeah, um, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Um, just as a bit of an introduction, um, my name is Stuart Nicholl. I'm the Head of Educational Design and Engagement at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and I'm going to be running the session today with my two colleagues, Tracy Madden, who's a Learning Technology Advisor at Edinburgh, and Marcello Carolla, who's an uh, Instructional Designer. Um, and like we said on the, the session, um, blurb um, I think this is a bit of a, an ambitious and exploratory one hour session um, and we're, we're aiming to kind of get I guess invite your input into designing an open primer course about being a learning technologist um, so we'll, we'll do a presentation for the first sort of 10-15 uh, minutes just to kind of give a bit of a background and to, uh, an overview of what we're trying to trying to achieve um, uh, and and a little bit about about the primer course, um, and then we want it to be quite inclusive and collaborative. So we're planning to split into into three groups, and um, to talk about three different aspects of what might be in the course, broadly aligned to um, the CMOC capabilities, um, technology, pedagogy, and then policy legislation. Um, and I think hopefully um, that, that we've just tried that, and that should work. We're going to try to automatically split. Um, into those into those areas, so um, probably. But looking at the numbers, there'll probably be about three or four people in each each group, so um, should be quite nice small groups for for discussion. Um, I just about the session. Why why we're we're running this just now? Um, I, I don't. You probably have noticed the same thing, but over the last year, we've seen an increase in the number of new learning technologists. Um, people join um, the, the starting their career as learning technologists, or or shifting across, or being redeployed, and you know, as a result of of the pandemic and a lot, so much teaching having been pushed online, um, we really did see an increase in the number, and and, and we started to put together at Edinburgh anyway um, uh, an induction toolkit. Um, to get people started on on being learning technologists, um, that was quite a static um, resource that we've put together. Um, so we we really wanted to investigate whether we could potentially put together um, a, a short course, a supported on um, online course um, that was uh, a bit more about community building um, and about an introduction to what a learning technologist is. Um, and it's not only just aimed at people who are aiming to become learning technologists, also as more people are, um, more teachers are engaging with technology uh, in their teaching and having been pushed into the online space. Um, it's also about what we think others should know about learning technologists. So this isn't just aimed at people looking for a career in te learning technology, it's also a kind of primer um, so that people know about what we do. Um, so this also the point of the session, I guess, uh, you know, is um, an opportunity for us to reflect um, upon our profession, um, for especially for those who um, are learning technologists. But if you don't identify as a learning technologist, then also um, it'd be very interesting to get your input into that as well. Um, so an opportunity to, re to reflect on our personal journeys, um, what, what we wish we knew before we'd become learning technologists, what we think others should know about us, um, and what we think those aspiring to be learning technologists should know. Um, and I guess just put our cards on the table a bit, like what we'd like to achieve as a team at Edinburgh, um, we've started to build a collection of courses um, to do with different aspects of teaching with technology. Um, well, a course that we launched um, in the, the past couple of months is um, how to create an online course, which is a massive open online course that we've, um, we've launched on FeatureLearn. Um, and that was really had a similar kind of driver to it. We had teaching teams coming to work with our instructional designers, and we felt that you know we were always giving them this kind of um, quite static induction into what it is to, to design an online course. So we built um, Marcello and his um, instructional design colleagues, and anyway, we built um, uh, an online, a two-week online course, fairly short um, um, course 
about what it is to design um, an online course for, for those people to, to take. Um, we had our internal audience in mind, but we felt that it was actually of interest to the, the wider community. So we developed it as an open course. Um, and in the past few months since it launched, we've had over 2000 people engage in that course. It has, it seems to have been useful. We've had really great feedback. Um, we have other courses that we've been developing over the past couple of years as well. Um, an Edinburgh model for online teaching is about um, teaching online. We've developed that with our colleagues in the Centre for Research um, in Digital Education. We haven't opened that up yet, but it, we have had over 700 teachers internally take that course over the past year. But it is something that we intend to, to open up over the coming year to the wider community. Um, the, we've had MOOCs on um, introduction to social research methods, which um, is really aimed at um, researching what we do, so research and digital education, and that's been a useful course. And we've got plans for, for new courses. One of them is around creating media for online teaching, so a much more practical course. And then there's this course, I think, that fits into this kind of suite of courses that we're hoping to develop. Um, I guess what we'd like you to achieve out of today's session, um, like I said, an opportunity to, to reflect on our profession after what I think has actually been quite a difficult year. Um, we've been at the forefront of um, supporting that move to um, the use of learning technology online for so many. Um, have we learned anything new about what we do through the last year? Um, do we need to develop our understandings a bit further about any any different aspects? I think you know it's interesting that all are going to be launching um, their um, framework for learning technology ethics this week. I really think that is an important area that we do need to develop more. Um, I think there's also questions around the impact of legislation on our work. Um, it's kind of become an increasing burden over over uh, the last few years. And, and often leads us to do some contradictory things on the on the back of legislation, which, which is there for the good. Um, so those are things I think I think um, we could do with developing our understanding of a bit better. Um, but really interested to hear what what you have have to say about that. Um, also, it's an opportunity for for you to help us define the curriculum for a, an open primer course on being a learning technologist. And and feel free to tell us if you think that this this isn't a good idea or it won't work. We don't have any preconceptions, and we're very open to to your input to this. Um, and also, just lastly, um, it hopefully opening up the possibility for an opportunities for collaboration. Um, if this is something that seems to be of interest and that you'd like to get involved in, we'd be very open to, to any thoughts about um, potential collaborations um, with colleagues from other institutions. So um, feel free to kind of bring that up when we're, when we're in our discussion groups um, or also to get in touch with us after the session. And I just had a, a final slide um, and it was just, um, just thinking about what would be covered in a, in a short two week or three week primer course about learning technology. But just to um, acknowledge that it's a, it's a really complex um, thing that we do. Um, learning technology isn't really just one thing. You don't really, you don't kind of do an undergraduate course and become a learning technologist. Um, we, we have a variety of job titles and we work at a variety of positions within organizations centrally or locally. Um, we work in a range of educational sectors across secondary, FE, HE, commercial, um, and we come from a range of backgrounds. Um, you know, our colleagues come from academic backgrounds, technology, um, teachers, educationalists, designers, and we convert into this into this um, role of the learning technologist, supporting the use of technology in teaching. Um, and when I was kind of reviewing um, or thinking about this session, I went back to David Hopkins' book um, about what it is to be a learning technologist from a few years ago. Um, and I think it was kind of interesting. I was kind of reflecting on some of the people attributes that he was talking about that Sarah Horrigan had, had talked about. And it really did kind of resonate with me. I guess there is something um, about the people that I see working as learning technologists here. You know, there's a curiosity, playfulness, the, the need to build connections like we do it all. Um, uh, they need to be proactive, passionate, and, and we're always learning. Things are always changing, so we're always having to learn new things. So are there things that we need to tell people about um, those kind of people attributes that they, they, they kind of need to develop and build? And then there's the practical things. I went back to our learning technology toolkit and the sorts of things that we're, we're asking people to, to get up to speed with. And there's things like learning design, how to purposefully design and the use of technology in teaching. 
the practical skills around virtual learning environments and how to use them and, and then the kind of teaching skills around using them effectively, media management systems like Kaltura, virtual classrooms like Teams, Collaborate, um, Zoom, and then all the kind of um, issues are, and platforms and um, practices around assessment feedback. Um, and there's all, all the rest, of the, uh, almost limitless list there. Um, so this is a, quite a complex thing we're trying to squeeze into, into quite a short course. Um, and I'm going to pass over to my colleague Marcello, who's just going to talk quickly about um, what, it, what it is to make a good open course, because I think if we're going to do this, we need to, we need to be aware of what makes a good open course. Thanks very much, Stuart. Um, yeah, so just as um, Stuart was mentioning there in the earlier slides, um, myself and my colleagues and, and Stuart, we worked together last year on creating this How to Create an Online Course. And um, we did this in collaboration with uh, Future Learn. We used the platform um, to deliver this. And one of the things we, we decided on when we were making this course was trying to establish what are the core features that we need to, to build an online course. And obviously, how can we deliver this in two weeks? And obviously, with it being such a short short course, um, we, can't, we can't deliver everything uh, within two weeks. So we decided to pick out some sort of core topic areas. And the areas that we decided to cover in this uh, were things ranging from like persona. So it's more to do with um, knowing who your potential audience is, um, sort of who they are, the differences in the audiences, how to reach out to those, to those people. Uh, we covered areas around diversity and inclusion and um, how you can integrate that as part of your, your courses, uh, whether being fully online or part online in a sort of hybrid mode. Um, we also looked at active learning, why is that, why that is important uh, and how you can build that into your courses and also sort of tips and features on how to keep learners engaged. So we didn't want to focus too much on technology here, but we wanted to focus more on um, what are the key things you need to keep learners engaged. And one of the things we, we tried to do within that was trying to not only just use our own expertise that we've developed uh, over the years, but we've also uh, got good insight from uh, other people who um, have worked at the university who either come from, say, background in sort of marketing, so who, who know more about persona, to people who work uh, more in depth with technology and, and how all that integrates together. So we tried to package that into, into some sort of short online course over two weeks. The, the key thing here is it's aimed, it's not really aimed at um, new professionals, it's aimed at everybody who is, whether you're experienced in this area or whether you're brand new to this, even for teaching staff. And I know, as Stuart touched on, this has been a really challenging 18 months or so. Uh, we're having to, to shift to models that perhaps some of us have never, never done before. So we often feel that the things in this course that we be useful to, to everybody. Um, and we wanted to try and re create a gamut of learners that could come into this and try and get as much as they can out of this within a two week course. And then obviously, you know, expand beyond that. So when we're looking at you know, sort of good sort of open courses, um, it is quite an open question uh, as to what makes a good open course. But some of the key features that we found, not only whilst developing this, but also even over these sort of past year, year and a half or so, um, is trying to think what is it that people are looking for when they're looking to create courses? What are the important features um, when trying to move things online? And one of the, the, the key features we found is planning. So we, many of you have probably heard of the ABC Learning Design Workshop. We, we found that planning for this and getting people involved in this at an early stage was, was crucial. Um, helping them understand their audience just because it's online it doesn't necessarily mean that your audience is everybody it might be a targeted audience and um, you might have a very specific goal in mind for that and the other thing to take into consideration with things like practical elements so what about assessments how do you use these how will they be different you know um, people might be nervous about doing that online you might get others that are quite comfortable doing this and also digital tools you've got to think a little bit about accessibility here um, in terms of you know what are the needs of your general audience, and also just thinking sort of widely, um, how much of that technology you need to integrate into your course. It's one thing delivering a course online and thinking, well, I have all these capabilities and features, but it's whether you need to use them all, or whether you need to use them maybe sporadically, um, and it's more important about 
getting a greater sense of engagement within the course. So just looking at that, we've taken a couple of snapshots of what our course looks like. And um, so these are just some of the key features um, that we've taken from our course. And um, so as I've mentioned, they're sort of talking about identifying target audiences. So we've got a whole section on that. We allow people to create their own personas. And um, if you've never done a persona before and have no idea what it is, this will explain it in more detail and gives you a bit of a practical hands on with it as well, which is which is quite a bit of fun. Um, there's areas around sort of active learning, so we give uh, learners an opportunity to go and find out a bit more about it, what it is, uh, how they can apply that um, to their courses. And the last one there is, uh, yeah, I've deliberately put a bit of cake in there because who doesn't love a bit of cake on a Monday morning? Um, but this is talking a little bit about the learning design principles and how to create a learning sequence. And, you know, we use a very sort of simple static example there on um, how to build, you know, how to build a course if you're a brand new baker and want to learn about um, course design there. So we, we tried to incorporate a wide range and there's other things in there which um, I've not touched on, but that sort of gives a sort of general overview and flavor uh, of what we feel is necessary to make a, a good uh, online course. So I think my colleague Tracy will be talking next about looking at what support exists already. Thank you. So very quickly, we're aware that there are already things in existence. So for instance, Octel, some of you might remember, I was uh, somewhat involved in that as a volunteer. Uh, Octel was a MOOC uh, organized by ALT, as it said, to help those planning and delivering uh, teaching to make the best use of technology. So the emphasis was very much on peer learning and support, though there were also support tutors such as myself being uh, available to help encourage uh, or answer questions of those taking part. And we know that the uh, attendees uh, appreciated the fact that they, they liked the materials, but they also liked, it, liked the interaction with uh, support tutors. So materials from Octel still exist, uh, if you look them up, and they're openly licensed, so you can still use them today. Obviously, there's also CMULT as a framework. Um, this is very useful for those of us who want to give um, other people an idea of, well, what is a learning technologist? It, it's quite difficult to describe. Uh, the, um, the CMULT framework answers that question quite well. So I'm using it at the moment. I, um, I'm using it with new learning technologists, very new to the profession, to mentor them to give them an idea of what they're aiming at and give them an idea of the, the breadth and depth of the job. Uh, obviously, it's really meant for people looking back over their practice and um, it makes much more sense once you've been in post a little while, but nevertheless, it's still a good handy guide. Um, so as Stuart said though, what we're really looking at is at something who is something that's for the very early career learning technologist for the person who thinks of learning technology as perhaps something they want to go into or for those people who aren't learning technologists but work with learning technologists maybe you manage us um, maybe you want to collaborate with us so something that give you idea about what the job is what the roles are what kind of um, knowledge and strengths we offer which will help you um, and us work together on things Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Tracy and, and Marcello. I hope that gives a bit of an overview, um, sort of how, how, how we, we hope to try and kind of design this as an online course. And then, as Tracy was saying, you know, recognition that there there is stuff out there um, and this isn't the first time this has been attempted. I think we're, what we want to do now is to break out into into some subgroups, I think, for, for 15 minutes. Um, we're going to kind of take one group each um, between uh, Tracy, Marcello and myself. Um, I'm going to share the, we've put together a Google Doc, a single Google Doc um, that you can openly access, um, one for each group and um, I will share that in the chat just now and you're very welcome to input to that directly rather than just having a scribe. Um, 
Oh, I've got a short link there to it, Tracy, as well. <laughs> anyway, those those links should both get you to that same Google Doc. Um, but if we come together in those groups, we can have those discussions and we can start to to um, put some of our thoughts into that Google document. Um, I think that'd be really useful. We've got some we've got some initial prompts in there. So we did try this earlier. Can we um can we try? Stuart, do you want me to do um, it now? Groups. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Could, 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 is there, unless anybody's got any questions before we, we jump into the groups. Um, is everyone okay with that? Cool. Let's give it a try. We'll, we'll jump into the right. groups for 15 minutes and see what happens.